Okay, so next up we have Chapter 16, Noble Lady of Kaelin. We start off with some dialogue from Florina when the battle starts. Uh, basically, just her being cute and shy like she normally is, doing her Florina thing, doing what we love best about her, just being very shy and very cute. That's really about it. Uh, so getting into the actual map here, uh, there are a couple of things worth mentioning as far as uh, differences between this chapter and Ellie Wood's uh, version of this chapter. Uh, first of all, uh, as usual, there are Pegasus Knights. <laughs> uh, that's pretty much the given for Hector Mode. When you play Hector Mode, you know you're going to be fighting a lot of Pegasus Knights for some reason. Uh, but yeah, that's the first thing. Second, uh, you may have noticed that there are some ballistas on the side uh, near where Bakker is. Um, I kind of like the inclusion of ballistas in this chapter just because it kind of goes along with the uh, beginning scene when Florina is flying to Elliewood's group to, you know, warn him of the attack on Kaelin and everything. And then Bakker tells uh, all of his units to shoot down the Pegasus Knight. And you would think that they would use a ballista for that, so I, I really did like the inclusion of that. I think it's really cool. Uh, next up, there is a thief that's kind of uh, close to where Elliewood's units are, and also very close to the villages that the thief is nearby. Um, the thief, reminder, can actually burn down the villages if he reaches them, so uh, you're going to want to get rid of that thief as soon as possible, and I think that because it, it's a thief, uh, it'll actually go straight for the villages and not your units, so keep that in mind. Destroy that thief as soon as possible. You have Florina who can generally just fly right up to it, or at the very least block one of the villages from it going over to it. So, uh, yeah, definitely uh, use that to your advantage and get rid of that village as soon as possible. Also consider stealing the lockpicks, too, uh, with Matthew, just because uh, you may need lockpicks uh, for later chapters down the road. Um, the Brigand uh, reinforcements will also come from the south as well. Uh, normally they were in the mountains in Elliewood's mode, but in Hector mode they are in the south, which means they're a lot closer to the villages, so uh, make sure that the villages are gotten before then, or at the very least you can get one of your sword units down there to stop them. Um, as far as the reinforcements are concerned, uh, the reinforcements that appear from behind to attack Merlinus are also present in Hector's mode. I don't think they're different in terms of what they are and what they have, uh, but Merlinus is in a different location, so keep that in mind. You have to kind of defend Merlinus in a different way. Uh, make sure you can pretty much one round the uh, uh, Cavaliers so they don't move up to Merlinus the following turn. And as far as any other differences, uh, the only other one I can think of is Bakker. He actually has a steel lance in addition to having the javelin. In Elliewood's mode, he just had the javelin, so they actually made Bakker a little bit different uh, in this uh, version of the chapter. Um, I would almost say that they also made him easier by doing that, because with javelin, you'll always counterattack, but if he has the steel lance, you can at least pelt him from afar and not take any counterattack damage. Uh, but yeah, those are pretty much all the main differences. As far as uh, other features, um, Elliewood and, or not Elliewood, uh, Hector and Florina actually do have a conversation in the middle of battle if you actually uh, put them together and select the talk option. Uh, it's nothing really that significant, it's just a very short cutscene of uh, Florina trying to talk to Hector, and then Hector being too focused on the battle at hand to really pay attention, just because Florina is a very quiet and shy individual, so... Uh, nothing substantial there, but I actually do like this, uh, just because I think it kind of plays into the Hector and Florina support relationship, which, yeah, they can actually support together, and they actually do have a support ending, so if anything, it's kind of, uh, you know, kind of supporting that a little bit, uh, no pun intended. I actually do really like the Hector and Florina uh, relationship, and honestly, of all the female characters that Hector can marry. I actually like Florina the best, just because I think it kind of goes along with Fire Emblem 6 um, in a much better light, because uh, Hector's daughter, Lolina, I think kind of reminds me more of someone from, you know, uh, from Florina as opposed to any of the other people Hector can marry. Uh, but I won't talk too much about that. I'll talk more about supports later on when we actually start doing that 
and when I have my entire team made up and everything. Uh, but yeah, that was definitely uh, something I wanted to bring up. That's a uh, little conversation there, because again, it's really cute and, you know, just uh, something that's unique to Hector's side of the story. Uh, so as far as my adventure through this chapter, I uh, spent a lot of this chapter focusing on Ellie Wood and Rebecca, um, because both of them are still pretty low leveled at this point. I uh, didn't have to really focus on Sane or Lin that much, because they're already pretty high leveled. I don't think they're my highest leveled units, but they're still pretty far up there, uh, just from all the experience they got from Lin's mode. So, yeah, pretty much focused on those two, and just tried to do my best to clear all the... Um, the entire chapter of all the units that are involved in this chapter. And also, um, had a little uh, scare at one point in the chapter when I was unaware that I put Florina in range of a Ballista when the Ballista would have easily killed her because she was at very low HP and, you know, that pretty much would have uh, forced me to restart the chapter because I do not want to lose any units, so... Uh, thankfully, I was able to notice that in time. I was able to uh, dodge the attack, and yeah, everything was good. Uh, but that's going to do it for this chapter, so I'll go ahead and close this out with uh, another cutscene and my level ups, and then we'll move on to chapter 17. Okay, next up we have Chapter 17, Whereabouts Unknown. Uh, so for this chapter, uh, Hector starts the battle with uh, some dialogue. Um, I don't remember who starts the dialogue in Elliewood's mode. I, for some reason, just cannot think at the top of my head. Uh, but I do like this dialogue from Hector here, uh, because it's almost kind of uh, foreshadowing a little bit, because he kind of mentions somebody is watching me someone wants me dead and it's actually pretty clever because raven the unit you recruit in this chapter does want hector dead uh, he has a grudge against ostia so i think the game was kind of alluding to that and it's actually kind of clever with the hector mechanic or the hector mode mechanics of this level uh, because raven actually much like guy in chapter 13 moves towards your group after a turn or two so um, because of this Raven actually is a lot easier to recruit you'll actually recruit him a few turns earlier uh, but at the same time it's a little harder to uh, save the green guards which you need to save because uh, if you don't save any of them you won't get the bonus chapter so uh, you do have to be kinda quick there um, and there's also a couple of other things that I'll mention here in a little bit as well um, as far as differences in the main enemy force, uh, there are a lot more nomads. That's kind of the, again, the running theme of Hector Mode, where there's some chapters where you get Pegasus Knights, other chapters you get nomads. It kind of switches between the two from time to time. I think they went with nomads here because it's a castle chapter, and you don't really see a lot of flying units when it comes to these castle chapters. Uh, but yeah, you have uh, some nomads here and there. Um, there, even the reinforcements from the back that attack Merlinus, uh, I believe one of them's a Cavalier, as it normally would be, uh, but the other Cavalier is a Nomad in Hector mode, so that was kind of interesting to see that. Uh, perhaps the uh, biggest challenge with this chapter, though, is the Thief that appears very, very early in uh, this particular mode in this chapter. Uh, there is a Thief that appears in the middle section where those... Uh, Magic users will spawn after a few uh, turns. 
Uh, a thief will appear there very early and he is going to go straight for those treasures in the back. Uh, so you have to actually go very, very fast if you want to kill him. Um, it actually took me uh, quite a bit of time to get to him. In fact, I was very, very slow with getting to that point of the map. Uh, but thankfully I was able to track him down before he stole anything and was able to get the kill on him. Uh, like I said in Chapter 16, uh, this is a good chance for you to actually steal uh, some lockpicks if you can because, again, uh, you could buy lockpicks from secret shops, but if you steal lockpicks, they're free. So uh, if you have a chance to steal something, you may want to steal as opposed to actually buying lockpicks uh, because they, they can be quite hard to come by after a while, so just keep that in mind. And you don't get very many thieves either, so just things to... Things to keep in mind while you're going through this wonderful, wonderful game of Fire Emblem. Oh, also, uh, Bernard, he actually has some different weapons in this. Instead of having a Steel Lance, which is what he had in Ellie Woods mode, in this mode he actually has a Javelin and a Steel Axe. So he's actually a lot easier to take out with, like, sword users. So he becomes a little easier, but he does have that range too, so you have to look out for that as well. Uh, but yeah, still not really that hard of a boss. You have Hector, he can take care of pretty much anything at this point. Uh, so as far as uh, my run through this chapter, uh, the only thing that was kind of uh, worthwhile to mention, um, I got a lot of level ups with Barter in this chapter. Um, not intentionally, um, Barter was just kind of in the lead for a while in my main force. Uh, but then he just kind of went on a tear in this chapter. He literally destroyed so many units, took a lot of experience for himself. And because of that, he's now one of my highest leveled units uh, next to Oswin. So uh, because of that, uh, Barter is actually looking pretty good right now. But that's also not too bad because I need him to be at a very high level for the... Uh, secondary chapter I want to get of Pale Flower of Darkness, so I'm not complaining by any means, but it was something I found kind of humorous. In fact, there was a time where Barter actually got a crit when I just wanted him to weaken the enemy, so that was kind of funny to watch. Uh, but yeah, overall, um, it's kind of like Chapter 14 in a lot of regards. It's not a difficult chapter to complete, but if you want to be efficient and get everything, uh, it could actually take a bit longer. And you kind of have to think your or plan out your moves a little better as well. But if you keep at it and if you just kind of uh, go with the flow, you should be fine. And that's pretty much all I have to say for Chapter 17. Okay, next up we have Chapter 17X, The Port of Badan. Uh, just a refresher, in order to get this chapter, you have to save at least one of the Green Guards in the last chapter. If you don't save any of them and they all die, well, too bad, you're not getting this chapter. Uh, but anyway, as far as this chapter is concerned, uh, this is going to be the last chapter I'm going to be discussing in this video, uh, just because I want to make sure the video structure of the next few videos works out perfectly. Uh, so this is going to be a bit of a short one. Uh, but anyway, Chapter 17X, The Port of Badan, there is one difference between this chapter and Ellie Wood's version. Damien moves. That's really about it. That's the only thing that really changes here. Uh, Damien does have some different weapons. In Elliewood mode, he just had a killing edge. In uh, this mode, he actually has a steel sword and a steel lance. Um, so he's not as threatening. He can't freaking critical you to death. Um, but still, he does move. He does come right at you once he appears on the map on turn two. So make sure you have your, uh, your main base, your convoy blocked. 
Uh, you can easily just fill the uh, gaps in the uh, level with Oswin and Hector, have him come towards you, and then just spam magic attacks and distance attacks until he's dead. Really not a hard boss, and Hector and Oswin will do a lot of damage by themselves, so he's really, really easy. He's really not a threat. In fact, I'd almost say that uh, this chapter is honestly probably easier than Ellie Wood's version, just because you have less units to deal with. Um, because, yeah, he does come towards you, and he, that can be threatening, but at the same time, you get the experience. He's easier to defeat, so it's really not that bad. As far as the other units are concerned, they're pretty much the same exact ones you fought in Elliewood's story. You have the pirate with the hammer, the pirate with the devil axe, the pirate with the killer axe, the pirate with the sword slayer, the killer bow, uh... Archer, the Elfire Mage, and the Nosferatu Shaman. Uh, they can be pretty threatening, so just be very careful. Um, you may have to restart the chapter just to uh, get all the experience if you want all the experience, but otherwise, if you don't want to deal with it, just uh, go around the back. You can go the back way, not have to fight any of these guys if you don't want to, but uh, you know me. I love getting my experience, and I'll get the experience when I can, so... That uh, is pretty much how I would uh, personally handle uh, this chapter anyway. Um, but yeah, that's, again, that's really about it. There's not really much to say about this one, just because there's not really much different here. As far as uh, my playthrough of this chapter, I literally just, uh, you know, played it the same way I played Elliewood's mode. I gave a little extra experience to Kanas, who recently joined my team in this chapter. Uh, so I gave him a little extra experience, including the kill on Damien, uh, just to kind of get him caught up a little bit, and also to make sure that he could, at the very least, double the uh, shamans in the next chapter, because at this point, Kanas is the only magic user I'm going to be using for a while. I do have Sarah, and I will be probably promoting Sarah soon once she uh, gets up to level 20, but then she'll be the highest level, so I'll probably not use her as much anyway. Um, but yeah, aside from that, like, Kanas is my only magic user, so when it comes to magic users, he's probably going to be taking care of a lot of the stuff that's going to be coming up in these next chapters. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So uh, that's going to do it for this chapter, and that's going to do it for this video. So I will see you guys next time when we uh, go through the next three chapters. So see you guys then. Later, folks.